Well, it's about 4 a.m. in the morning here in Saigon. I can't sleep, jet lag. And it's 7 o'clock this morning, a few hours from now. I'll be heading to Dalat, or Dalat. And I uh, hope to be able to relax a little bit, look around, enjoy the cool mountain air, which probably won't feel that cold to me, considering where I came from. So bags packed, I boarded a bus and headed out of Saigon to my next destination in Vietnam, the mountain town of Dalat. I had thought about hiring a motorcycle to take me there, but as we drove on through the heat and traffic of Saigon, I began to appreciate the air-conditioned comfort that a clean bus has to offer. Eventually, we began to make a gentle climb into broad hills and low mountains. Finally, in the last half hour of the trip, we made a winding ascent to the bus station in Dalat. My altimeter reading, about 4,800 feet. I caught a taxi and found myself at a rather charming hotel with a nice lobby, beautiful gardens, and an interesting name, the Pink House. Anyway, I checked in, then took a short walk around town. The hotel owner's son talked me into doing a tour the next day. So early in the morning, I was on the back of a scooter, shooting through the streets of Dalat. I had dragged my A2 jacket the whole way to Vietnam, wondering if I would ever need it in the tropics. Yet on that bike, in the chilly dawn air, the thick horsehide suddenly came in real handy. The road broke out into the countryside, and if I just looked at the dry landscape with the brown soil and pine trees, I could swear I was in Colorado or California. The young lady who was my guide took me to our first stop, Fields of Coffee Trees. I had enjoyed the thick, good-tasting coffee since I came to Vietnam, and to my surprise, I discovered that much of it was grown right in this area. In fact, Vietnam is the second largest coffee producing country in the world, beating out Colombia. Sorry, Mr. Valdez. Looks like Mr. Nguyen just took your place. Our next stop was something I don't think I've ever heard of before, a cricket farm. Now, why would a person want to farm crickets? Ugh, well, me and my big mouth. I just had to ask that question. Okay, what do we got here? Crickets. So, I'm here in, near Dalat, but not in Dalat. Anyways. And, uh, uh, Namban. A, you said Namban. 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 Yeah. Okay, I'm in Namban. And these uh, crickets are oh. for, for eating, apparently. And so, I gotta try one here. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's Ooh. nutty. It's kind of like... Um, the uh, fried soybeans. <laughs> mm. Oh wow, it's so nutty and, and it's really quite good. I'm, I'm quite surprised. You would think, oh, an insect, it must taste horrible, but it's just got this kind of, sort of like meat, sort of kind of a roasted nutty flavor. And it's quite surprising. I must say, the cricket breakfast was uh, a tasty start to a busy morning. I was then shown a silk factory. The local market. And rounded off the morning with a little jaunt to a local natural attraction, a waterfall. We took a short path down, foot in hand, which wound its way through caverns not quite measureless to man. A 
I do confess. All the climbing, or rock and vine, may have incited some more simian tendencies within me. For lunch, my guide said she would take me to visit a local tribal minority group. I wasn't sure what the food would be like, but considering what I had eaten for breakfast, nothing could faze me. Hello! It was a bit of a surprise, however. The people were simple farmers who had recently been settled out of the mountains. And like many hinterland tribes, it seemed like the adjustment to sedentary life hadn't been easy. But part of my tour costs went to the meal I would have with them. It was fairly simple. Rice, veggies, meat, noodles, and rice wine. And more rice wine. Or rather, to my tastes, rice whiskey. Whoa. Distilled spirits. Pretty strong alcohol. Gotta say. But Grandma made sure I knocked down five glasses of the stuff. Man, the women could drink. Oh no. They seemed to really get a kick out of me. And then I produced something from my pocket that they were really injured. Which, of course, I had to pass around. Man, those women could smoke too. On the way back, I was a bit worried. My guide and driver, however, well, her two glasses of rice wine made me wonder if she would get me back to Dalat without a stop in the orthopedic ward. Somehow, our drive through the fields and the mountains was uneventful and scenic. Maybe it was the chilly air. But just to be safe, at the end of the day, I suggested we round off our time with some good stiff coffee at a cafe in Dalat. Besides, my jet lag was getting to me. The next day, I took a bus through the mountains to Nha Trang. The stellar heights and beautiful montane forests eventually gave way to the hot and chaotic lowlands all too soon. And unbeknownst to me at the time, I was to spend a cramped and uncomfortable night on a bus to my next destination, Hoi An. But the drive out of the Southern Highlands left me wondering, what would I miss the most about the lot? The cool climate? The grand scenery? Or maybe the sooty rice wine dumped down my throat by an old lady? Well, my name is Caleb, and this is Dalat the not quite mile high city. Okay. Oh, you started again, see? <laughs>